All right, we're here with Coach Wilcox for his Tuesday media availability. Go ahead and start with questions. If you do have one, let me know by uh, sending me a chat. We'll start with Jeff Ferrado. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, good morning, Justin. Can you uh, give us your impressions of uh, the USC team you're going to play um, and, and of their quarterback, the latest in the long line of uh, transfer quarterbacks you've seen that have been pretty good? Yeah, uh, very, very explosive offense. Um, they do what they do very well. Uh, QB is a unique talent, uh, his ability to throw the ball, uh, be accurate with it. And then he's a really strong individual. He's got great instincts. And, uh, you know, when it's time for him to run or move in the pocket or buy time, he's, he's adept at that. So a uh, very talented guy. And there's a reason he gets a lot of attention. If I can go in a slightly different direction, um, this is uh, possibly the last time Cal will play a game at the L.A. Coliseum, um, perhaps for a long, long time. Um, it's been going on for almost 100 years. I, I wonder what your thoughts are on, on that tradition ending. I know it's not your focus right now, but you, you coached there for a couple of years. So you're familiar with that facility. Um, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, uh, to be honest, Jeff, I haven't thought about it at all until you just brought it up. I mean, we are, you know, immersed in – trying to get better as a football team, you know, and helping our players perform better. Um, and that's, that's really all we're thinking about. Uh, I realize that there's a, a lot changing in, in college football right now from, you know, conferences to transfers and all, uh, all different sorts of things. But right now all we're concerned with is helping our players try to perform better. Sure. Understood. Do you have any memories of that place when you were there for two seasons? I mean, it's, it's a historic facility that's had two Olympics, a third one coming and a lot of, a lot of big stuff there. Yeah. Story uh, program and the venue is uh, like a lot of the venues in our, our conference. There's, it's a, a place with a ton of history, a lot that's happened there. And uh, they've had great teams and great players uh, throughout the years. And we got a lot of guys from Southern California who are, who are excited to, to go home and play in front of their friends and family. Do you imagine Cal would ever try to schedule a non-conference game against USC? Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know. That that'd be up to the <clears throat> the administration and the uh, chancellor, and I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people that'd be involved. I'd be all for it. I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen moving forward. Again, so much is changing so rapidly, and um, that's really not where my head's at right now. But uh, I'm sure there are a lot of people that are discussing those things. So I'll leave that to them. Hey, thanks. Yep. Okay, we'll go to Jesse Stewart from Rivals. Uh, sweet. So, I mean, I'm sure you guys will watch basically as much as you can of USC, but is there anything from Oregon State in particular that you guys are taking away from that game? Um, anything they did especially well? Uh, yeah, I, I think, yeah, we watch all the games, and then we, we add a certain number of games to our cut-ups that we build. And, <clears throat> you know, each game has its own dynamics. And, um uh, that's the, the great thing about football is the small things, uh, play here or there, there's, that can kind of, uh, you know, change the, the course of those games. And uh, it's a hard fought game. And again, you saw a good, good football uh, from, from USC. And so we, we uh, you know, we, we look at all those, all those games, like I said, and take things and try and apply them to what, uh, what we do and also the matchups in a given week. And uh, everybody plays, you know, there's good coaches in our conference and all those coaches play to the strengths of their respective teams. And we try to do the same. Thank you. Sorry, I had myself on mute. We'll go to Steve Croner from the Chronicle. Yeah, Justin, you know, obviously you're not giving away any trade secrets, but if there were one or two X's and O's things that you think you guys have to do to win the game Saturday night, what would the, the two, maybe the two main things you have to do be? Yeah, limit the explosive plays, uh, which is simple in concept, but more difficult to do. If you look at, there's a reason, again, you go, go back, there's a lot of people that are a good football coaches and there's good players in our conference. And these guys, you know, they put up 43 or whatever it is a game. Um, but uh, to play good football, you got to have your numbers right. Uh, you got to limit the explosives and make some one-on-one -on -one tackles or one-on-one -on -one plays on the ball. Uh, because the style of offense that they employ, and a lot of folks do, is they create isolations and, uh, you know, make you tackle. And then in the pass game, you know, they can 
protect it. And if the quarterback can get out of trouble, you may have to cover longer uh, if you're not quite able to get them on the ground uh, within 2.7 seconds. And that play goes three, four, five, six, seven seconds. Then the secondary and the cover guys are going to have to attach to people. And when the ball's thrown, you got to make a play on it. So um, again, simple in concept, but uh, you know, it's a challenge and, and that's what our guys live for. I mean, that's why you sign up to play is you want to play against the best. And this, these are some of the best. Okay, we'll go back to Jeff Ferrata. Yeah, Justin, you referenced uh, tackling in the open in open spaces. You obviously had to do that against Oregon as well. How would you characterize how well you guys have done that this year and and your tackling in general and in specifically in the Oregon game? Yeah, um, yeah. Again, the uh, tackling in space is always going to be an emphasis, um, and it's a uh, Everybody talks about it. Everybody drills it. We all do. And um, we need to be better. Uh, I think, uh, you know, last week was there was some chances to get people on the ground that we didn't get them on the ground. And um, again, it's it's a, the, the concept is simple, but, you know, good athletes and explosive athletes are harder to tackle. You know, no offense, Jeff, but myself and you, we, we would probably be easy to tackle for a lot of players. Um, but really explosive athletes in space are harder to tackle. And so you got to, you know, do a great job with your technique. And then you also have to get guys getting off of blocks and running to the ball in case you're not going one for one every time. And I don't know that they're even the best defenses out there that go one for one every time, maybe some of them, but um, you got to get extra bodies to the ball and run to the football and uh, be able to, uh, you know, get multiple people around the ball carrier. Is that really the whole idea of the modern, the offenses that you see now is to create those opportunities? Yeah, space, isolation, good athletes. Because if they're the same athlete, one guy's got the ball, and let's say it's an his his identical twin, the guy with the ball has the advantage because he knows where he's going. Yeah, by the way, I would only get tackled in space once because I would be in the hospital after that. Fair enough. Uh, Fair enough. Uh, speaking of the hospital, uh, can you give us an update on some of your uh, ailing fellas? Um, you got Lumagia. Moai Osefa didn't play, Blake and Braxton Croto and Mason Starling. Uh, Mumaja, Braxton, who was the other one you mentioned? Um, uh, Blake. Blake. Yeah, we we hope those those would uh, those guys would join us this week in practice. Um, it's day to day, but we would anticipate that. And Mason Starling, unfortunately, will be out for the remainder of the season for with a lower body injury. And will will Mo Iosefa play this week? Uh, that's day to day as well. Uh, so we're hoping he'll be uh, doing some more in practice today. And Chris Street has been sort of a long term, you know, week to week kind of thing. What, is he out for the season at this point or? No, he's uh, back joined us and uh, taken more reps uh, last week and, and this week. So he should be available if needed. And Mason Starling had, had only played a little bit for you, but what did you think about what he was able to contribute? Yeah, he flashed. Uh, some good things um, obviously has a ways to go uh, as a player, but unfortunately will be lost uh, for the rest of the season. And, you know, he just got to do a great job in the off season in everything outside of just practice, you know, developing his body, um, investing in his development physically and in the, you know, football world. And if he does that. Uh, he'll have a chance to come back and really help us. Is he going to have to have surgery? Uh, that'll be determined by the doctors and him, but it'll be, it's a long-term uh, recovery. So we're, he would be out for the rest of fall and, and uh, to be determined for spring. All right. Thanks. Okay. We'll go back to Jesse Stewart from Rivals. Sorry. Uh, you mentioned uh, isolation and space. Um, I watched a little bit of that Oregon state game, obviously, and they really emphasized like isolating their nickel, like 20 or uh, Oregon state's nickel. Um, is you guys have a pretty good nickel on Colin Gamble. Is there anything you guys do to protect him? Or do you, is there any keys you guys give him um, outside of your normal keys when you see that kind of stuff on tape? Yeah, again, you know, not all defenses are the same. There's certain times the ball probably went to the nickels guy based on the coverage. And then there's mm -hmm. other times the ball maybe went elsewhere because the coverage dictated or the development of the play dictated it. So um, these offenses all have built-in answers, you know, uh, and based on the look and based on the leverage and based on the box count or, you know, all those things that there's going to be a place to go with the ball. The, the QB 
uh, does a really good job of knowing where to go with it. Um, but, you know, I don't know that it's, again, that it's just one defense, you know, against one call. Like there's just a lot of variables in there where, you know, they, they have uh, maybe it showed up on tape because that call versus that defense at that point, you know, sent the ball there. Um, but there are ways to support the nickel. There are also times when the nickel will uh, need to win with his leverage. So it just kind of depends, Jesse. But, uh, you know, game to game, those things change. Thank you. Yeah, we'll go to Emmanuel Macedo from the Daily Cal. Uh, good morning, Coach. Um, you're coming off a rough, a rough month, you know, in terms of uh, injuries, loss. Um, how do you kind of prepare the team for what's become an exponentially tougher schedule in the month of November? Yeah. Well, football, um, you know, you don't always have control of you know, the guys that get dinged up and things happen and that's, that's just the way it goes. And uh, it's unfortunate. We don't want anybody to get hurt on our roster. Heck anybody else's roster. It's just part of the game, unfortunately. And there's a reason there's, you know, more than just 11 that play and there's a depth chart and guys are here working and maybe they didn't have as many opportunities early in the season, but now they do. And there's going to be numbers of guys uh, moving forward that are going to have more and more chances to play. And that's why they came here. So our jobs to help them develop and their jobs to practice with purpose and go out there and, uh, you know, step up and, you know, it's their time. So I, uh, it's, it's part of the game and it happens, uh, you know, each and every year and you try to minimize it as best you can. You know, you'd love to have your, your starting 11 the entire year and offense, defense and special teams. But, uh, sometimes you get, get banged up more, uh, you know, a little more than other years. And that's just the way it goes. Thank you, Coach. Okay, we'll go back to Steve Croner from the Chronicle. Yeah, Justin, Jeff was asking about uh, memories at the Coliseum, and I'll, I'll throw one out there for you. I, I would think the game in 2018 when you broke the streak at UCLA – or UCLA, USC had over Cal would rank as one of the best wins, most important wins for the program that you've had since you've been at Cal. What would a win Saturday night mean – and would it perhaps mean even more than the win in 2018? Oh, you know, I don't know. It's hard for me to put weigh each win against the the next. Um, we know it's a really good team. I know it's very important for our players and our program. And uh, in order to to rank them, I'd be hard for me, Steve. You know, maybe one day when I'm older and not so just immersed in the the day today and this week, um, I could probably give you a better ranking on wins and what they mean and all that but we know it's a really good team uh it's a great opportunity for our players and uh we're just honestly uh all we're concerned with right now is having a, our best tuesday that we've had and uh we know it'll take a, a good football game because they're again very talented but our guys are excited to play and a lot of them are are going home to compete and they're looking forward to it thank you okay we'll go back to jeff ferrato when I asked you about the uh, injured players, I didn't ask how Jack Plummer's doing. He's been roughed up a little bit in recent weeks. And how's he, do how's he doing right now? Battling. And uh, he'll be available. And uh, Jack is, uh, unfortunately, he's taking more shots than we would like him to. But he keeps getting up. And he's a tough guy. He's a competitor. He wants to be in the game. And so we'll, uh, you know, he'll, he'll be getting his treatment and doing what he needs to do. But uh, he, he's, a, he's a tough guy. Has that toughness uh, earned him a lot of respect from his teammates? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, you're always that position in particular. Everybody will kind of watch to see how that guy responds to getting hit. And he uh, he keeps getting up. And um, what we need to do is take some of those hits off of him. And uh, but he, I, I would you know, venture to say that everybody on the team recognizes that. And he's a, he's a tough guy. He's a competitor. And like I said, he wants the ball in his hands. So that's a good have thing. You, have you had a, any conversations with him yet about whether he intends to uh, return for next season? Yeah, we spoke uh, earlier in the season and then we'll speak, you know, uh, as the regular season concludes, but right now he's focused on, you know, this week, this game. And I'm sure there's times that he, you know, a lot of them have, a lot of them have decisions to make, you know, and that's not just our roster that's throughout college football. So uh, we'll work with each of those guys individually on what's best for them. 
And, and on the subject of the quarterbacks, can you just talk about what, what you saw from Kai Milner? And, you know, he was playing against reserves and the game was out of hand at that point, but, but he played, looked like pretty well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two different circumstances that they were in, but I, I think Kai did what you would hope he would do getting an opportunity like that. So I'm proud of him. He uh, was comfortable out there. He went through his progressions. He threw some good balls. He had a scramble. Uh, I think he operated well. So that was really uh, positive and uh, talked to him after and, you know, he felt really good out there and, and that's a good thing. So we'll keep building on that and keep him ready to go. And given that you have a starting quarterback as a coach, is it nice to get some evidence in a, on a game day from your backup to, to see that he could cope out there? It is, Jeff. Uh, the circumstances weren't the ones that we'd want to get him reps in. You know, we want to get him reps because we're playing really well and have the chance to get him reps when we're on the other side of it. That's the issue I have. Um, but for him to get in the game is important, and uh, it just needs to be under different circumstances. Thanks. Yep. We do have a few more in the queue. We'll try to get through these quickly. We'll go to Jim McGill. Go ahead, Jim. Hey, Justin, on the, on the same topic with Kai, did you see enough from him where you're more comfortable letting him play if Jack's dinged up to a certain point than maybe you were before he had a chance to get his feet wet like he did? Uh, we felt pretty good about Kai um, for a while. He's still a young player that's growing, and, you know, there's no, as we all talk about all the time on here, there's yeah. not, no substitute for game reps. And, uh so those are really valuable for him. But uh, I think it probably built and only helped him, uh, Jim. I think that's fair to say. And I, I kind of go back to he, he did what you would hope that he would do in that, in that situation. And do you um, know from looking at the film <clears throat> what the ratio was of starters versus backups that he was playing against in, in his drives? Uh, you know, I, I don't have the ratio. I mean, we can pick that up off the tape. I was really watching him going through his progressions. You know, was he doing the right things? Did he operate the offense uh, like we would want him to? And did he put the ball where it needed to be when it needed to be there? Um, you know, but, you know, they have good players. It's not like the guys that were in the game are bad players. Those players that were on the field would, would play for a lot of folks. Was it your impression that it was mostly starters he was going against, or was it a mix? Uh, again, Jim, I don't, I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look at it. You know, I can, I can give you the. I don't want to misquote the ratio out of eleven. So, okay, it just kind of seems like it would speak to your confidence level of who he's playing against and who he's having success against. Yeah, it does matter. Um, but what <laughs> really matters is, can, is he doing the best that we would ask him to do in those situations? What you know, did we protect him well? Uh, did he did he go to the right place with the ball? Was the ball accurate? And he did a good job there. So he can only play against the players that are on the field. And yeah, does it matter? Yeah, sure, it, it does. Uh, again, this, the the scenarios for he and Jack weren't the exact same, um, but he did a good job when he was in there. And I think he operated the offense well and only helped himself. Thanks. Okay, any final questions for Coach? All right, thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay.